Well, good morning and welcome to Better Living. They've let me out again. And this time they've let me come to someplace pretty fun. I am at the zoo, the Toledo Zoo. I am here with Jeff Saylor, the executive director, and we are having a great time. I'm still hoping that summer is going to return pretty soon. <laughs> you got a taste of it here, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we've had some warm days. I'm guessing that you got a taste of what attendance will be like this summer too. We've had some very good attendance since March 27th when the aquarium opened. I mean, well over 150,000 people have been through the park. And, crazy. And that, yeah, it's, it's great though. I'll bet. Really good. A lot of fun here. You, it's an outstanding zoo. We have said, uh, I've been here in Toledo now for just over a year. I've said that I think sometimes people who grow up here, who live here, sometimes forget what gems this area has. Oh, yeah. And the Toledo Zoo is certainly one of the gems. This is a top notch facility. It's amazing what this zoo is. Oh yeah, last year it was voted number yeah. one of all the zoos in the country. It's well known worldwide. Uh, it really is a, a great institution that, uh, that we hope Toledoans are proud of. And you know, we can come out and see it anytime we want. It's just down the street and you guys have a, you know, we can get our memberships and, and come visit if we want just for a couple hours at a time, which I find especially good when you have those young kids that can only handle a few hours at a time without making exactly. us crazy. But it really has a regional draw, doesn't it? People come from, from Indiana and from Michigan and even Illinois, a, a few states over. Uh, we typically have visitors from all 50 states and mm. Canada on an annual basis. Uh, we get a very large percentage of guests from Michigan, as you would imagine, with Detroit being so close. And we're really, we're pretty excited about that because one, it allows us to continue to have this really great facility. Sure. It brings a lot of dollars into Northwest Ohio. Uh, Absolutely. So, you know, we're, we're ecstatic that we can be part of, you know, the economic development of this region. That's an enormous economic impact. I'm telling you, the restaurants and the hotels and the other uh, tourist attractions of our area, they definitely appreciate what the Toledo Zoo does for Toledo. Yeah, I mean, we, we um, our national organization, the AZA, uh, did a study that showed that zoos like ours are putting in close to $90 million into wow. their local economies. That is great for our area for sure. Now let's talk about the aquarium did open March 27th. What has it been like? What's the attendance been like? What are people saying about the aquarium? We've heard great things about the aquarium. I think people were really, really excited for its return. It, it's one of their, uh, their most favorite exhibits here at the zoo. Uh, we've heard nothing but good out of the uh, the experiences they're having there. We put a lot of hard work mm -hmm. into it. There's a lot of really cool animals in it, some beautiful exhibits, uh, but at the same time, some wonderful artwork. We were yes. able to really tie in uh, some local Toledo artists and get some of their work shown there. We'd love to highlight all the glass art and, and the such that, that Toledo's known for. And so it's really a great opportunity to bring back a cherished exhibit and to add some other pieces that really promote Toledo. It is, it is a really cool thing that you've done because you have made it not just just about the animals. Mm -hmm. It is about the artwork and it, it ties both things in really well. And it's, I believe it's not only for the young, it's a great way to uh, make it fun for both some of us who are more seasoned <laughs> and the very young children too. Uh, it's a really nice, really nice exhibit because it has, like you said, things for the young and, and those that are a little bit more mature. Yes. yes. You know, it's kind of uh, a nice environment to go in and just sort of relax and see the fish. On a busy day, it can be kind of crowded in there, but that at the same time, it's infectious because you've got everybody so excited, you know, you get the touch tanks or seeing the different fish or the sharks and the turtle. Uh, it's just a great exhibit. It really is. How unusual is it for a zoo to have a freestanding building, a freestanding aquarium of this size? It's not very common and, and certainly not one of this magnitude. Uh, w this was one of the, the largest aquariums of its time when it was built. And uh, over the years, it, it's, it's still, you know, garnered a great reputation. And now with the remodel, it's even better than ever. Absolutely. Now, to get into the aquarium, you don't have to pay anything extra. It's included when you get your admission to the zoo, right? Yeah, and that's kind of interesting because a lot of freestanding aquaria that, that aren't in zoos, you know, the, the ticket price will be right. over $20. Here you get a zoo and an aquarium for less than that. It, it really is a great deal. It's, yeah. a, it's an affordable day if somebody doesn't have that membership. It's an affordable day to come in to the zoo. Well, and with the membership within two visits, yeah. you've paid for your membership. I, I honestly think, I mean, not to question people's sanity, because who am I to do that? Because I am certifiable, frankly. But um, I, I 
question people, if you have children especially, and you live in this area, if you don't have a zoo membership, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, with, I mean honestly, by the time you're done your third membership, yeah. that trip was free. It really was. And it's a great thing to do for just, you know, four hours at a time. It's a great educational thing. You know, we all complain about how our kids aren't doing any educational things mm -hmm. during the summer. It's a great thing to do educational-wise, and it's just fun. They have a really good time. It's also a great, safe place for people yeah. who just want to get out and exercise and walk around. You know, we have these beautiful gardens here on grounds. Uh, that's usually one of the quieter areas of the zoo. So if you're looking for a place to just get outside and enjoy the enjoy nature, it's a great place to come. It's a great date night too, or a great date day to walk exactly. around with your spouse too, exactly. and have a little quiet time away from those kids. Now you guys uh, owe a thank you to the Lucas County oh, voters definitely. too. We couldn't we couldn't have the zoo that we have without the support of Lucas County voters, and that's really why you have a zoo of this caliber right. and magnitude in a metro area the size of Toledo. And you just, we can't thank the voters enough. Well, congratulations to the voters because they've done some good work. It is a gorgeous place out here. And we're going to continue our discussion, tell you about all the great things in just a few minutes. Stick with us. We will be right back at the Toledo Zoo. Here now with Jay, he is the aquarium curator. So you're gonna tell us all the fantastic things, all of the creatures that are in the aquarium the or beautiful. the art that is in, what are you gonna, what exactly, what details can you give me? Well, my job revolves mainly around taking care of the animals okay. and managing the people that help take care of the animals and acquiring new animals for the aquarium. And that's all been a real exciting time the last two and a half years. Uh, I'll bet it has. Lots of new critters, yes, yes. Um, as well as some old favorites. So, well, you've got them from little, mm -hmm. I mean, really little mm -hmm. to really not little big. So let's start on the, let's start on the little end of that. What are some of the small animals that we're going to, that we can see in the aquarium? Well, you have to look real close in the live coral exhibits because some of the smallest animals are almost microscopic. You mm. have to get right up to the glass, get your face right up there and look close to see those. But probably the smallest, uh, most visible animal would be the flashlight fish. And they're in a special enclosed exhibit where it's dark and you can really see their glowing pockets of bacteria beneath their eyes. They just look like little flashlights swimming around the tank and they're only about three inches long. And that's, everyone sees those and, and really likes them. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, when you were working on the new aquarium, uh, what did you, like, what were you looking for? You're looking for something new and cool to bring in because you had some animals that's that right. you were going to keep. but. What was that process like? Where do you go to look for new animals? Well, we have our knowledge of animals to begin with to, to draw on. The old aquarium certainly had a lot of different right. animals in it. And what we did was we listened to the visitors, we did surveys, and we watched what animals were more uh, uh, interesting to the people. Mm -hmm. And then what we did was we brought back the best of what we had in the old aquarium and then added new animals that the, new, that the visitors might not even be aware that were possible. Things like the bonnethead sharks, which are a type of hammerhead shark. Now, let's talk about some of the sharks in particular, because, you know, we think of sharks, we think of big sharks, but that's not always the case. Sharks can be small. They start off as baby sharks. Sharks are not always dangerous, necessarily. Some of them have very small mouths and only feed on crustaceans and not fish or people. So um, we have a wide variety of sharks here. Some of them, you can even go to the touch tank and pet a shark yes. if you're lucky. Yes, well, let's talk about that. What all is in the touch tank? Well, the touch tank, I think I can say, without having done a formal survey or yes. anything, is definitely the most popular exhibit in the aquarium. And then the ocean lab next to it, where you can see, get up close to invertebrates, which are animals without backbones. But in the shark ray touch tank, there's uh, different species of stingrays that have had their barbs clipped, kind of like getting your fingernail clipped, so they're not dangerous. They're not gonna hurt you. Right. And then there's some bottom-dwelling sharks that have very tiny mouths, and visitors are instructed how to approach them and safely and, and carefully. Um, and you can pet a shark or a stingray as they go by. That's a pretty cool thing. You know, you don't just wake up one morning and say, I'm going to go pet a stingray or a shark. Well, not in Toledo before, no, but no, you can no. now. <laughs> Is that, what, um, what made you decide that you wanted to become an aquarium curator. You wanted to work with, I think there are sometimes kids who just say, I want to work with animals when I grow up, but I think that they think of perhaps the more common animals, the I want to work with 
Oh, maybe even they say, I want to work with lions or I want to work with monkeys or I want to... <laughs> what made you decide you wanted to work with aquarium animals, fish and sharks and those kind of animals? Well, I've been wanting to work with fish all my life. And my parents tell me that when I was three years old, I was really enamored with dinosaurs. I had huh? little plastic dinosaurs and everything and knew all their names. But then I found out what extinct means. And I realized at that point I was never going to see yeah. a live dinosaur. And what I did was I transferred that love of the weird to aquatic animals, which, you know, there's reptiles, which are closer to dinosaurs, I suppose, um, in their looks. But um, as far as just really strange behaviors and really cool critters, I think aquatic animals are, are the best. So if there's somebody, there's a, a little girl or a little boy that's come in here and they've gone through your aquarium and they've gotten to the touch tank and they've uh, touched a shark or they've looked at the aquarium and they see all these and they think, oh my gosh, this is so cool. I would love to work with these animals. When I grow up, how do they do that? What should they, what the, should they make sure that they're working really hard at in school or what should they be planning to do? Well, certainly school work is vital yes. for that. Um, you have to get typically a degree in marine biology from a, a university. But you know, there's some ways that even children, young kids can focus on their, on their careers, even in, in grade school. And there's things you can do. You can certainly research on your own. You can have a home aquarium. We even have a, a, a junior zookeeper summer program there here. There you go. And you know what, that's great for engaging the kids and showing them what it's really like and get, make sure that they, they know exactly what it's about. Cause you know, let's face it. Some kids think, oh, well, I'm just going to play with dolphins all yes, day long. Yes. And it's not like it's not that. that. Uh -uh. Um, no. But you know, for the reality of it, I think that that, that zookeeper program brings a lot of kids into the into the idea that they want to do this work for a, a life as well. They can come see what you do every yeah. day. So let's talk about those big fish. We talked about the little right. the little guys that you can see here. We talked about what's in the touch tank. What about the what about the big guys that you're going to see in the aquarium? So all of our animals are growing leaps and bounds. Yes. Um, they're easy to tr it's easier to transport animals when they're small. Mm -hmm. um, so we brought in some of the smaller sharks, but they're already half grown um, just in the last few months that they've been here. Um, I think probably the uh, the most interesting large animals would include um, Tink, our rescued green sea turtle that couldn't be released to the wild because it has damage to its hind flippers. And so we've brought it in here and it's making its home in Toledo now. That's a real popular larger animal. Um, the bonnethead sharks that I mentioned, um, even some large freshwater fish. We have some big lake sturgeon, which are a state endangered species. Lots of fun stuff to see at the aquarium and it's open the entire time that the zoo's open, right? Yes. All right. Well, come and check it all out. And if you are interested in working in something like the Toledo Aquarium here at the zoo, you should check out that junior zookeeper program for sure. We'll be right back on Better Living. Welcome back to Better Living. I'm here now with Jen Brazel. She's the events coordinator here at the Toledo Zoo. Let's talk about what's going on because I'm I'm just going to go out on a limb and say y'all have a, just a couple things going on here just at the zoo this, this summer. Just, summer. just a couple things. You're not busy or anything. No, no, no uh -uh. not at all. So give me give me a couple things. Let's just start off the top. Okay. Um, it's, it's an exciting time for us. This weekend is our dive into summer Memorial Day weekend right. celebration. So we have all kinds of fun activities going on. It's kind of the kickoff of our summer season here at the zoo. So we have our summer feed program starting. Our animal shows are going to get started and we'll have some fun entertainment and activities and crafts and all kinds of things for families to come out and enjoy this Memorial Day weekend. It is fair to say, I assume, that if parents are looking throughout the summer for something to do with their kids, there's generally always something going right. on and checking your website is a good idea. Oh yeah. If you're I looking mean, for something to do, go to the website. You're going to find sure something yes, going there's on. there's all kinds of neat things going on. Um, as I mentioned, our summer feed schedule, it's on our website. People can come in um, every day of the week. There's different feeds going on, whether it's polar bears or penguin feeds or hippopotamus feeds yes. or bird feeds or amphibian feeds. Every day there's a different feed going on and then they can visit the different exhibits and see that um, throughout the summer. And that runs, you know, Memorial Day weekend through Labor Day weekend. And then we also have some really great animal shows going on. Um, we have one that um, is in our Nature's Neighborhood Children's Zoo. 
do. And then another one that takes place in our historic indoor theater. And um, it's just very interactive. You can see birds flying around and a lot of our children's zoo animals and participatory that kids can really get engaged and excited about animals. Well, I, as luck would have it, we are right across from a board here that says do at yes. the zoo. So in commercial breaks, I've been able to just like check out everything right, that's right. going on. So you also have um, some garden tours. Yes, our horticulture department, um, they are, do a fantastic job keeping our zoo grounds yeah, just beautiful. Mm -hmm. So um, throughout the summer, there are dates, if you want to visit our website, on um, different garden tours, and you can register for those tours, and they're free. And um, our master gardeners and horticulture staff take you around zoo grounds and teach you how to take those tools and you know, establish yeah. them in your own gardens and yards back home. We talk a lot about things you can do with your kids, and, and this is a fantastic zoo for kids, but. I think those are great too for, you know, some of us that are more seasoned and oh, perhaps sure. even more seasoned than me, which is hard to believe that's possible. But, um, you know, I mean, really for the people who are retired, those are great things. This Definitely. zoo really is for everyone. Definitely. And then you even have some, some even bigger events, some, some right. big parties, you know, like you're, you have a big uh, fundraiser, the zoo to do, right? right? Uh, are there still tickets available? There today? are still tickets available. You That's can visit our website. Time. Oh yes. It's coming up yeah. on Friday, June 19th. And yes, it's an exciting event. Yeah. It's so much fun. There's over 50 area restaurants here that people can come in and sample and um, a variety of entertainment going on. It's just a really fun time. People love that event. That is really, it, it's, it is a party. It's a party yes. and you're, it's a, a, for a good cause and it's a lot of fun too. Definitely. So the, lots of things like that going on mm -hmm. throughout the summer. Is the website the best place to check out oh, for anything sure. like that? Yes, yes. Not only do we have this weekend coming up, the first, next several weeks we have um, Lucas's birthday, our elephant yes. turns four. And then after that we have a, an event coming up called World Oceans Day where we teach people to, you know, about our um, conserving our oceans and there's all kinds of fun activities going on in the aquarium and our children's zoo and feeds going on that day so there's lots of great events coming up and people want to visit our website and see everything we have to offer there's so much what do you do for an elephant's fourth birthday it is a lot of fun um, at 10 30 our behavior department the elephant department and our fantastic zoo team program they put together these really great enrichment items this year of course is aquarium themed yes and so they do like paper mache different aquarium themed animals and stuff them with treats so lucas gets to come out and crush them and open them and um, eat what's inside and then we also have an elephant size birthday cake for him but of course yes, yes. and lots of fruits and vegetables and healthy treats for him but he seems to really enjoy it that and his mom like does fun. too yes well of course yes i mean i've never had a birthday party for an elephant yeah yep, i've called my fun. kids lots of things in their life but an elephant is not one of no. them yes <laughs> monsters monkeys you know all of those things but not right, an elephant right. yes um memberships are a great idea i, I pointed that out when i was talking to jeff about how if your kids are little especially right. oh my goodness what a fantastic idea for sure the i mean it pays are. for itself in two visits yes. it's yes. worth it um we've got a lot of great summer camps going on this summer so if you're a member you get discounts yes. on that so and you can visit as many times as you want and take you know take advantage of this wonderful new aquarium and all the events that we have and it really does have its benefits membership for has sure. its benefits besides the fact that you can come and go you know um there are the discounts on the summer camps and there are discounts at other zoos across I mean For you're sure. traveling you know you go on summer vacation yep. you can you can do that um, information about those memberships also on the also website. Also on the website there's a whole list of reciprocal zoos that you can get discounts by having our membership to visit those zoos as well. So a lot of families on vacation and they want yeah. to have their membership card with them and go to those zoos they can get a discount as it's well. It's really a great idea. What are the hours of the zoo? The hours starting Memorial Day weekend we are going to be open 10 to 5 is the last entry at the gates but then we give people until about 6 to finish okay. up their visit. So Yes because we all know what it's like to drag your kids yes. away from the <laughs> elephant or away from right, the right. or out of the aquarium that they're having so much fun right. doing. Um, and again, this weekend starts kind of the the way it's going to be all summer long. Pretty much, yeah. Everything just really kicks off. Like I said, our summer feeds, the behind the scenes tours. You can go to the website and take part in those. There's different opportunities for you to go behind the scenes and meet our keepers and feed giraffes or see what it's like to be a polar bear keeper or a rhino keeper so there are lots of fun things going on so those really kick off and then we have um, 
the shows, as I mentioned. On um, this weekend, there'll be a giant sandbox play area for our kids. Oh, that, you know, the kids can play in, and our children's zoo will have lots of fun activities going on. So I think that that is probably one of. Besides, I want to be a, you know, a professional sports person. I think that zookeeper has probably got oh, to yeah. be like the career opportunity or for the sure. career that most kids. They are definitely choose. the rock stars of the yes, zoo. Yes, Everybody I think wants that to that talk is the, the career that every child wants to have. Yeah, yeah, they do a great job. Now, the, uh, Jay mentioned the whole zookeeper mm -hmm. camps. Do those run? as my papers take off <laughs> off the table there they go um do those run throughout the summer there's information about those zoo keep yes there's still zookeeper. openings on um, that junior zookeeper camp sells out really fast because it's very sure. popular and kids love it i mean they get to get right in those animal exhibits and really learn what it's like to be a zookeeper it's really an awesome camp i think that they would have a ton of fun with that for sure what is the is it toledo zoo dot org yep. that's what i thought okay toledo zoo.org check it out because yes. every kid wants to be a zookeeper and there are so many things going on here from behind the scenes stuff to right. uh, concerts feeds, lots of great <laughs> stuff so make sure that you check it all out we will be right back on better living yeah.